Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have quite a lot to talk about. We're going to be discussing superposition, phase difference, path difference and interference. So let's get started. Starting off with the principle of superposition. So when two waves interact, the resultant displacement is the vector sum of the individual displacements. For instance, we have two waves over here with a uh, certain amplitude. So let's say this one here has an amplitude of about two meters and this one here has an amplitude of about one meter. Now at any point, the resultant displacement of those two waves will be the sum of the individual displacements. For instance, if we were to draw the uh, resultant wave, this should have an amplitude of three because the red one here has an amplitude of two and this one here has an amplitude of one and two plus one as i'm sure you know gives us three so we can actually draw the resultant wave all we need to do is start at zero then carefully go up to three then we're going to hit zero at the same point and then we're on our way to minus three and then back up to zero Notice that at any point, the displacement of the resultant wave is the sum of the individual displacements. Just before we move on, guys, let's do a quick reminder of what phase difference is. So phase difference is how far out of sync two points in a wave or two or more separate waves actually are. And this is expressed as a fraction of the wavelength times 360 degrees. For instance, those over here are two waves that clearly differ by half a wavelength. So this wave here starts at the point where the, at the halfway point of the previous waves. So the phase difference in this case, I'm going to write this as PD, please don't confuse that with potential difference in electricity, completely different, will be equal to the fraction X over lambda, which in this case is a half times 360 degrees, which will give us 180 degrees. The phase difference in the, the case just below is a quarter of a wavelength. So the phase difference will be a quarter of 360 degrees, which is 90 degrees out of phase. While we are discussing phase difference, it's really, really useful to discuss one more quantity, which is essential for our study of superposition and interference, and that is coherence. So I'm just going to write this down over here. So two waves are coherent if they have a constant phase difference. So constant phase difference. And in the examples which um, are about following this video, I'm going to be assuming that the all of the waves are coherent. This means that this phase difference, this number, whether it's 0, 180 degrees or 90 degrees, does not change. In practice, the waves don't really uh, overtake each other or pass each other at a variable rate. The, the, the rate is always fixed, the phase difference is always fixed. In order to explain what path difference is, we're going to be looking at the famous double slit experiment. So imagine that we have two slits, essentially, essentially two openings through which some waves, for instance, it could be light or it could be sound, emerge. Let's look at a particular point. Let's focus on slit one. So the light which comes out out of slit one is moving along, it's bouncing along, bouncing along, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and aha, it reaches point P at maximum displacement, i.e. at its amplitude. It reaches point P at a high. If we look at this green wave, which is coming out of the opening two, it is doing something very, very similar. It is emerging out, it's bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down, bouncing, bouncing up and down, and aha, it reaches point P at a similar high. 
Now this means that we are going to get what is known as constructive interference at point P. If that's the case, at point P we're going to have a very bright spot. The reason for that is because right at that point the two waves would meet peak to peak and they would add up. There are two conditions for, cons for constructive interference at a point and the first one relates to phase difference. We can say that constructive interference occurs if the phase difference between the two waves which interact is zero degrees. Additionally, because zero degrees in this case will be equivalent to 360 degrees or 720 degrees or any really any multiple of 360 degrees will also cause constructive interference because at that at those phase differences the peak of one wave will meet the peak of the other wave. The second condition is related to a quantity which is known as path difference. Now this is very different from phase difference and let's explain what that is. Going back to our diagram, the distance from slit 1 to point P is let's say 6 centimeters. Let's also say that the distance from slit 2 to point P is 10 centimeters. This means the light emerging out of this opening will travel 6 centimeters and the light emerging out of this opening will travel 10 centimeters. This means that there's going to be a path difference of 4 centimeters. And let's just write this down here so we can say that in this particular case at point P our path difference is equal to 10 minus 6 which is 4 centimeters. This leads us to our second condition for the constructive interference and that is that the path difference has to be a multiple of the wavelength. For instance at point P if we assume that the wavelength is equal to 1 centimeter, the path difference is equal to 4 centimeters. Because the path difference is a multiple of the wavelength, then we're going to have constructive interference, i.e. a bright spot. Now, how does that work? Well, let's look at this a little bit closely. We can express this statement into a mathematical statement by simply writing the path difference is equal to n lambda, where lambda is the wavelength and n is an integer. Imagine that those are the two waves that are um, essentially arriving at point P from the example just to the left. In the configuration which is shown at the moment, excuse my incredibly basic animation skills, but at the moment the path difference is zero. So a peak corresponds to a peak exactly right. However, we can shift one of the waves by a wavelength, let's say to the right. If I was to do that, you can see that a peak will still meet a peak. This will correspond to n is equal to 1 and a path difference of 1 centimeter. Additionally, if I was to move this along a little bit more, so let's say n is equal to 2, this will be a path difference of 2 centimeters and then 3 and so on and so forth. The integer n typically corresponds to an appropriate spot of, of the actual interference pattern. For instance, the central maximum would mean that there is essentially no path difference. So that will be n is equal to 0. The next one along will be n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 
3 and point P will be n is equal to 4. Now, because our wavelength was 1 centimeter at n is equal to 0, our path difference will be 0 at n is equal to 1. Our path difference will be 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters, and then 4 centimeters. Now, let's have a look at the conditions for destructive interference. The first condition for destructive interference is that the waves must be in antiphase. Now, this means the peak is going to meet a trough. For instance, here a peak is currently meeting a peak and a trough is meeting a trough. However, if we were to shift one of the waves by half a wavelength, then a peak is going to meet a trough. And all I did was move this wavelength to the right by half a wavelength. So this means that our path difference has to be a uh, essentially half of the wavelength. This is not the only path difference that will work though. So a multiple of the wavelength plus half a wavelength added on top of that will always ensure that a peak is going to meet a trough. Mathematically, we can express these as follows. First off, the phase difference has to be 180 degrees. They must be in antiphase. Second of all, the path difference has to be equal to m plus a half multiplied by the wavelength. For instance, in the example that we had above, the wavelength was one centimeter, and there are certain path differences that will produce destructive interferences because a peak will be meeting a trough. The condition is that the path difference has to equal n plus a half times lambda. Well, let's just write and calculate a few of those down. So the let's say for n is equal to zero, the path difference, I'm just going to write PD for path difference in this case, will have to be zero plus a half times lambda, which is just one centimeter. So that's going to be a half times one, which is just 0 0.5 centimeters. For n is equal to one, the path difference, which I'm calling PD in this case, will be equal to n plus a half, which is one plus a half times the wavelength, which is one centimeter. So that's 1.5 times one, which is 1.5 centimeters, and so on and so forth. Now, each of those integers n are going to correspond to the appropriate dark spot on this diagram. Okay, folks, this was quite a long and intense online lesson on path difference and superposition and phase difference. Hopefully it all makes sense. And thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next video.